Hello, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. My name's Chris and today we're going to learn how to balance an equatorial mount like this Skywatch EQ5 I've got in front of me here. Now, what is balancing? So the first thing you need to understand about an equatorial mount is there's two axes, two axes of movement. We've got the right ascension axis, which is this one, and this basically counteracts the rotation of the Earth. And then you've got the declination axis at the top here, if I undo the clutch, and that enables you to point the telescope at any position in the sky when combined with the right ascension axis. So the right ascension is the main tracking axis, but the declination is important for allowing you to reach bits of the sky. It doesn't matter where the declination is pointing for accurate tracking, as long as your polar axis for the mount is in line with the celestial pole. And in the north here, we're very lucky that we've got Polaris, which is pretty much bang on where that celestial pole is. It's a bit more complicated for my friends in the Southern Hemisphere. It's good to learn how to balance an equatorial mount if you get into astronomy, because they're a big part of astronomy. And if you start off doing visual with a Dobsonian, for example, it simply moves up, down, left and right. It won't be too long before you start thinking, well, I'd like a, a telescope and mount that kind of tracks the sky and I maybe want to put a camera on it and see if I can take some pictures. And you, your tool of choice for that is an equatorial mount. Before you get started, the first thing you want to do for balancing your equatorial mount is put the counterweight on first for safety. And the reason for that is if we put the telescope on first, it's going to be very top heavy. And if, you, if the clutch isn't strong enough, the brake for that axis, it will just swing around really quickly and your telescope's going to hit your tripod or worse, something next to it or, or get wrenched off. It's just not worth the risk. Always put your cat weight on first and then you, you're nice and safe then. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So we'll put our cat weight on there. And for further safety measure, we've got a little screw there. That's a safety screw that we can pop on and that's just in case this screw gives way on the counterweight and it slides down it's not going to fall off and land on your foot and break your foot or your kid's foot even worse so nice and safe we've got the counterweight on first the safety screw on to stop the counterweight falling off the shaft and now you can see it's very counterweight heavy so we pop something on the top like a telescope it's going to be nice and nice and balanced eventually so here i go pop my Vixen dovetail on the, the Vixen saddle. I'm just going to tighten it up anywhere for now. Make sure that's nice and tight. And now if I move the telescope to the side, actually let's put that a bit more horizontal. If I move the telescope to the side, so the right ascension axis is parallel to the floor and then let go, you can see it just swings down because it's more counterweight heavy than telescope heavy. So to make that right, I'm just gonna move the counterweight further up until that balances out. Still a little bit counterweight heavy, I think. So a little bit more. There we go, perfect. Now the thing I need to mention, probably before I got to this point, is you want to have everything on your telescope you're going to want to use during the night. And I mean right down to, the, right down to taking the dust cap off and having the focuser in the rough position you're going to be using it. Because you, the, focus, the focus is going to go in and out, changing the, the length of the telescope and therefore the balance point. So get that roughly where you think it's going to be focused with your camera and your lens dust cap off, all the accessories on that you need, and then you know that when you balance it, you're not gonna have to rebalance it when you remember to put your camera on or whatever. So now I've got the right ascension axis balanced. We need to balance the declination. So first of all, I'm gonna lock the right ascension off, undo the clutch for the declination, and we can see that's lens heavy now. So I need to move this dovetail towards me to counterbalance it so it's nice and level but the thing you want to consider here is whether you want to do it sideways like this which is going to be more accurate but not as safe or whether you want to return the right ascension to the upright position and have, have the saddle to, to push against so you're kind of working with gravity. Now I'm going to take the risky approach and 
do it on its side. Move that down like so. Tighten it up. Still make, making sure we've got a grab of the telescope. And now we're going to see it's now focuser heavy. It's kind of just falling down a bit that way. So lock the clutch, undo it, move it slightly forward, tighten it up, undo the clutch. I think we're about there now. So in theory, if I undo both the clutches, the declination and the right ascension, I should be able to put this telescope in any position and it will balance. There we go, lovely. And that's gonna make it a lot more smooth for observing if you're moving around the sky, but also it's gonna be better balanced for astrophotography. And there's a little trick you want to do for the astrophotography side of things and that's you want to have it slightly counterweight heavy or what some people call east heavy so in that i'll show you why we do that in a moment i'll just put that a bit counterweight heavy and it does put a tiny bit of strain on the motors if you've got motors on your mount but the idea is that you've got gears inside your your mount and if you if you push the gears too tight like that they bind, so they're set in the factory and people, people set them up themselves to have a slight gap. But that means that the teeth can move and it creates a bit of backlash wobble. So what you need to do is have your counterweight slightly counterweight heavy, so it's always pressing, there's always a bit of tension on that axis, pressing the teeth together so the mount doesn't wobble. The gears don't wobble, the teeth don't wobble between each other. So that's called having it east heavy because as it raises up to track the Earth's rotation, it's uh, going east heavy. And I call it counterweight heavy because it just pretty much describes what I'm doing. I'm moving the counterweight down, making it heavier on the counterweight side. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up how to balance an equatorial mount. Very useful to know, I feel. And if you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and you wanna follow along, consider subscribing. Um, I have channel membership by hitting the button down below if anyone's interested in that and a uh, special thank you to my channel members Dan the Man and the Four Grapples and until next time please remember to tell those clouds to bugger off. <laughs>